Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Christopher Aaron. It is November 28th, 2023. This is the iGold Advisor channel. We are going to have a silver price forecast video. Yesterday, we did the gold update. Make sure you pay attention to that one first because the direction that gold moves in is generally going to dictate the direction silver moves in. However, there are going to be different twists and turns. So make sure you watch that last video first. Now let's get into the silver price forecast. Make sure you hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when these videos come out. Hey guys, if you don't want to subscribe to any of our premium services, I would really appreciate it if you just take one moment and hit the thumbs up. It means a lot to me. It really helps out with the algorithms here on YouTube. So I would appreciate that. Um, and next week, I want to let you know, so you should hit the subscribe button because we are going to do an update on the silver and gold mining forecast. So we'll get into some of the mining companies. I'm going to talk about two of the specific companies that we are investing in here for gold and silver profits throughout this move. So make sure you follow and you'll get that next week. Last but not least, some weeks I don't have a chance to post videos here on YouTube, but I often put quicker updates on Twitter at iGlobalGold, so make sure to follow the account on Twitter. Okay, let's get into this silver price forecast. The price action here is incredibly exciting. Please make note of our legal disclaimer, and here we go. Now, we're going to do big picture and bring it up to the present. Silver, here we are from 2008. You can see the crash of 2008, the recovery into 2010, Federal Reserve slashing interest rates, the spike up to 2011, the peak just above $49 per ounce, five-year bear market into late 2015, and the consolidation that leads us to the present downward trend that we are still in here. Now, if you are worried that you're not going to understand what all the lines mean here on the chart, don't worry. We have the key as normal. This will explain what everything means here on this chart. There is a logic behind this system and what we should expect for silver here within the next 18 months. So what I want to do first is draw to your attention this point. This is where we are right now. As this is being recorded, just flirting above the $25 figure as we get into the trading in Asia going into Wednesday morning. This is being recorded Tuesday night U.S. time. Here we are. Now, pay attention to the solid blue, blue for the primary trends. Starting from the most recent peaks here, we have a best fit. Not every single peak is going to match up perfectly, but look at the best fit downward trend. So we have sellers who showed up here at 30, here at 29, here at 28, here at 26.50, here at 25.50, right? These sellers showing up at lower and lower intervals, whether they're manipulators, whether they're legitimate sellers, whether they're hedging companies that are selling forward their silver production from mines, and it's interesting to talk about. It's probably all of the above, but I really don't care so much. What I'm actually focused on is what is the exact price level that we should expect these sellers to show up again because they've been emerging at lower and lower interval intervals here for the last three years. And that level right now, this exact moment of time, is $25.20 in the spot market. And as I said, we have just flirted with 25.10. So functionally speaking, you can see that silver is bumping up against this downward trend going back for the last three and a half years. It's bumping up against it. Look at how many times here over the last three and a half years the sellers have shoved silver back down below this downward trend. Very interesting. Okay, now... Some might be asking, well, who cares about a downward trend? Here's why you should care. This is the system that I've been developing for the last 20 years, and I place primary emphasis on trend analysis for this reason. Notice some of the previous trends here that I've drawn in going back to the 2011 peak. 
in which silver broke these multi-year downward trends, some of them more steep in this instance from 2011 through late 2012. But notice what happened when this initial downward trend shown in the blue thin line was broken. What? Silver moved higher by $7 in just four weeks following this downtrend break. Take a look at what happened here in late 2015 into the new year 2016. Boom, downtrend break, silver higher by $7 in just a few months. Fast forward three more years, we have this grinding consolidation here into 2020 after the coronavirus panic. Pay attention to where the mouse is. Very simple analysis, but very powerful. People like to confuse this type of thing. The most simple forms generally yield the most powerful results. Break, boom, $12 higher in just three months following the downtrend breaks. Bring it back to the present. Where are we now? Bumping up against a three and a half year downtrend once again. Go back to the last video. Gold is on the verge of a breakout. Gold is not going to be held back for too much longer. It might need another few weeks or so, but it's not going to be much longer. So we have a primary downward trend break that is soon going to be on our hands for silver. You do not want to miss this one. You do not want to wait until after the $7 or $12 move higher to be buying physical silver, to be buying leveraged forms of silver if you want to try to make additional profits, or to be buying silver mining companies. Because once this move happens, they are going to be revalued significantly higher. So what should we expect now that we're setting up for the fourth primary multi-year downward trend break here in the last decade? Well, if we look, 7, 7, 12, let's just hypothesize here for one moment that this downward trend break is going to come somewhere in the middle of these figures. Let's suppose for one moment that this is going to get us something like $9 within the two to three months following the downward trend break. That's how quickly these things tend to move. So let's say somewhere in the middle. Let's be conservative for a moment. Let's not talk about pie in the sky figures, fast forwarding, you know, several years into the future. Let's just talk about a few months from now. Let's say we add on $9 to the breakout point here. Does that make any sense from other forms of technical analysis that we can see on the chart here? Aha. Look back here to 2011, 2012, and early 2013. Notice one, two, three. Notice these swing peaks here that after silver peaked in 2011 and then tried to recover one, two, three times up at what? This $34 to $35 region. You can very clearly see that sellers showed up here at 35. Isn't it interesting that if we take a conservative average of these figures here for previous downward trend breaks, add that onto the breakout point, that that matches precisely with an independently derived form of resistance up here at the 34, 35 resistance zone going back to 2011 and 2012. Isn't that incredible? So whenever we have different forms of analysis, we're looking at surge potential following a primary downward trend break. We're coming, we're estimating somewhere in the middle of the previous surges. That matches with the resistance overhead here in the $34 to $35 range. So our primary expectation for the surge that follows the break of 2520 is going to be talking about within the next two to three months, talking about silver up here in the $34 to $35 range. You certainly do not want to be doing the majority of your buying after that happens. Now, for a moment, let's clear the chart here, okay? The market has not broken out yet. There could still be a little bit of a pullback, perhaps a few cents, perhaps a dollar or so, but this thing is getting ready. And so what we then need to do is try to estimate how much time do we have once silver breaks out before those targets are achieved. Is this going to be another rapid move higher or could this be the way that we've seen here over the last year, 
where silver just takes this kind of stair step, two steps forward, one and a half steps back, two steps forward, one and a half steps back. Could it end up being like that? Well, let's look at some evidence here for that. First of all, let's highlight, this is going to be our target zone for once the initial breakout occurs. We talked about that a moment ago. So can we imagine here that the initial move is going to take us into the former peaks here around $27 on a highest probability, I would expect a pullback from that point. We often see retests of former breakout lines. You can notice here going back to 2016, the initial breakout, and then a few weeks later, the retest occurring there before the acceleration higher. So I expect us to break out, followed by a retest, followed by a move up to 30 as an initial stopping point. 30 was the 2020 and the 2021 peak here. So initial move up to 30. It would not surprise me to see something of a significant pullback from 30. We had a pullback from 30 here, 30 down to 23 in just a couple of months. I would not be surprised to see a, a scary pullback from 30, perhaps down to 25, 26. That would match nicely with the new rising trend. Look at the magenta color, one, two, three. Can you imagine we get a fourth hit here later on into 2024? And then this market rounds its way up as follows a fifth hit to the target. So this would be the more conservative scenario. There are some investors here who would look at this scenario and they would say, great, that gives me more time to accumulate physical metal, gives me more time to accumulate silver mining companies. That would be excellent. But I have to tell you, in this kind of scenario, it's possible, it is possible that the revaluation in the silver miners, for example, does not happen until the later part of this move. So it could be quite frustrating here if we're talking about a few months from now, silver makes a retest, then it hits 30, then it needs to come back and test this longer term trend again. It could be some time, if you look at where this longer term trend rises to meet the target, that could be all the way out here in 2027, early 2028. You think I'm making this up, Silver has a way of taking its sweet time on certain portions of the move. Look at the move here out of the 2008 low. Notice this kind of grind for the first part of the move. However, then when we look at the next part of the move, pay attention to what is setting up here. We look at 2010, bring it back to the present. Could we be setting up alternatively for a move that is much more rapid, that basically doesn't leave any time for the slow pokes to come into this market and accumulate silver and silver miners? Could we be looking at, let's say, a six-month move from 25, blowing through the initial target and then continuing higher back to 50? For those people that say this type of move would be impossible, uh-uh. Just rewind back in your memory after the initial two years. Notice it took two years here from late 2008 into late 2010 for silver to just grind its way higher. And then what? From 2010 to early 2011, silver moved higher by $33 in just over six months. So absolutely, this type of move can happen. We've already had a year and three months of this grinding. So I'm starting to wonder if this is getting ready for the impulsive move higher. Perhaps not yet. Maybe we need one more pullback after the breakout. But I think we should be very prepared because history, what's that famous saying? Doesn't always repeat exactly, but it sometimes rhymes. So we have a question mark here. Let's bring it back to the present. Gold is breaking out. If you have not watched the last video, make sure to go back and watch that gold video because you'll see gold is now making a fourth attempt to break out and fourth attempts are rarely representative of long-term tops. So gold is on the precipice of breaking out to new all-time highs. So we know silver is going to have the wind at its backs. The only question here is when is silver going to break the 25-20 level, the primary downward trend, 
And then are we going to get the more conservative type of grind still for another year or two, like in this period? Or is silver ready for the impulsive break higher, which leaves very little time for most people to get on board? And I will tell you that we have one signal that we are following that, are go that is going to tell us whether or not this is going to be the more conservative or the more impulsive move higher starting immediately. And that signal is as follows. It is the gold to silver ratio. And we are performing proprietary analysis on that gold to silver ratio that you just saw flash in front of your screen. And the moment that we get the signal that tells us that the impulsive move is underway, that is going to be going out, but it is going to be going out to our premium subscribers first. And within the next several weeks, silver could be higher by five or $10 after that signal registers. So if you want to wait around and you know hope that it's going to be the more conservative signal here and hope that you have another year or two to still accumulate, you can go ahead and do that. This signal is very close to registering and we are following this every single week. That's the backdrop on silver. It is bullish, but it's a question of how quickly it is going to be bullish. If you would like to follow along with our proprietary analysis on that gold to silver ratio, the key answer for the timing, as well as all of the other investments that we are making with exact flash updates sent right to your email inbox the moment that we make investments, as well as coverage of Bitcoin, the stock market, the currency markets, the rest of the commodity markets, you must join us in Precious Metals Intelligence Plus. This is our flagship service. We've been publishing now for seven years, going on eight years this February, and we are just getting warmed up here for this breakout in gold and then assessing how rapidly silver is going to follow. Make sure you join us in Precious Metals Intelligence. If you are a higher net worth investor and you're saying, this all looks good, Christopher, I'm with you. I believe silver is going to be moving higher following gold, whether it moves rapidly or whether we still have another year or two to accumulate. But I would like to take my investment career to the next level. You have to understand the power of these private placements. In private placements, you get even more upside for making the exact same investments compared to making those investments in the open market because when you're willing to commit a minimum of $10,000 per investment, silver companies and gold companies will reward you with free warrants. And you do not receive the warrants if you make these investments just through any normal brokerage. So that's why if you're a higher net worth investor, you owe it to yourself. Go to our webpage and, and read the free materials on there to learn about the power of these private placements. We either have a few months here or we have conservatively speaking one to two years. By the way, you also receive a free subscription to our flagship Precious Metals Intelligence Plus, so you'll be up to date on when that signal registers. If you would like to sit down and speak to me, Christopher Aaron, one on one, know you can reach me on the consultations tab of our website. You can book a 30 or 60 minute consultation. I take no fees, no kickbacks from any of the bullion dealerships, none of the mining companies, none of the conferences that I speak at. I am 100% independent. I work with clients just like you, those who are completely new to this sector, as well as those who have been investing in the precious metals for 20 or 30 years. And you're looking for a professional's take on ways to diversify in this market, timing, ways to store bullion, ways to invest in mining companies, any and all of the above. You can reach me on the consultations tab. So 
Silver is on the verge of breaking a primary downward trend. We've only had four of these signals in the last 10 years. Every time that this has happened, silver has moved at least $7 higher in the months following, if not over $10 higher. How much higher is it going to be this time? And then when we achieve those initial set of targets, is this going to be the moment where silver makes the blast off to 50? You don't have too much time to prepare. Thank you for being here. Remember, one week from today, we'll be back and we'll discuss more about the silver and gold mining sector. So make sure to subscribe.